Okay, this video tutorial looks at the mathematical strand of trigonometry and more specifically we're going to focus on the unit circle. So first we need to understand uh, what the unit circle actually is. So the unit circle is a circle with a radius of unit 1 and the centre at the origin of 0. Okay, um, so a good example of this is in our diagram where we've got the origin here and we can see that the radius is a length of 1. Okay, so our point up here obviously is 0, 1 and our point on the x-axis would be 1, 0. Okay, uh, this is just looking at the quarter, uh, sorry, unit quarter circle. Okay, so basically the first quadrant of our circle. Um, and it just allows us to get a bit of an idea about uh, what cosine and sine angles uh, will, values will actually give us in terms of the degrees. So here's an example of how we can use uh, a unit quarter circle to actually find out the value of cosine or sine if we're given the angle. So for example, if we're going to look at um, cosine 20, okay, we can see that 20 is here. Now our x-axis is our cosine, our y-axis is our sine, so our cosine of 20 is going to be around about 0 0.93, okay, around about 0 0.93, just because we find the angle of 20 degrees and we go down to our cosine. If we're going to look at sine of 55, we find 55 and we go across to our sine and this is going to be approximately 0 0.82. Now we can also use what we call the unit half circle, which is again the first and the second quadrants. Um, of our circle and we can use those to work out the sine and the cosine of different angles. Now something to take note is that when P is in the second quadrant the cosine value which remember is our horizontal value this is going to be a negative. Okay so when it's in our second quadrant the cosine is negative but the sine value remains positive the whole time. So a value of p here and of p over here will have the same positive sine value. Okay, that's important to understand. Okay, so let's look at some example questions here. Uh, it says use the unit half circle to estimate the value of cosine 140. So again, we find 140 and we go straight down to our cosine value um, and it looks like it's going to be just over negative 0.75 so we'll say approximately negative 0.77 and our sine value for 100 we find 100 and we go across to our horizontal axis, sorry, our vertical axis, which is our y axis, and we can say that this is approximately 0 0.98 because it's pretty close to 1, okay, but it's just underneath. What I'd like you to do now is I'd like you to have a go at uh, some practice questions using the quarter unit circle, all right, to find sine 25 and cosine 70. Uh, once you think you found those, uh, please continue with the video and we'll see how you went. Uh, here are some more practice questions, this time with the uh, unit half circle. Again, very similar. Uh, can you find sine 150 and, or the values of sine 150 and cosine 120? Um, I'd also like you to just highlight what you notice about um, sine 150 and sine 30 because we, it's very important that we identify this.
Uh, when you think you've got the answers to both or all of the practice questions, um, continue the video and we'll see how you went. Okay, so let's see how you went. Uh, sine 25, we find 25 degrees, which is here. We go all the way along. And that's going to give us approximately 0 0.4. Or two. If we're looking for cosine 70, we go all the way up to 70. We go straight down because remember cosine is our horizontal axis, and that's going to give us a value of approximately 0.34. If we're looking at our half circle or half unit circle, we need to find sine 150. We go over to sine, we go over to 150. We go straight across, and we can see that's going to go through 0 0.5. Cosine of 120, we find 120, we go down. That's going to be approximately negative 0 0.5. And if we're going to find out what we notice about sine 150, which we know is approximately 0 0.5, and sine 30, which is on the other side, that's also, that's a pretty bad drawing, that's also going to be 0 